Now then, welcome to my shipping container. It's the place I escape to where I'm proud to sit and relax into all of my hard work and reflect on life. It has some great design ideas and although not quite finished yet, gives me a taste of simple living and the happiness it provides. So let's show you around and the new upgrade, one step closer towards off grid. And when EcoFlow contacted me and said, have you got anywhere you can install one of our power kits? I was like, you are damn right. I can fit this in several places. This was the top of my list, my shipping container, but I've got a converted silo here. I've got a garden room at home I could fit it in. And as soon as I do a van conversion, I am definitely gonna be getting some sort of kit like this and uh, sticking it into a van because it will charge up off an alternator as well. So pretty diverse, I would say. I am gonna get all these cardboard boxes into there and hopefully get it installed with a pretty knackered finger after I sliced it very badly the other day getting into a town in the Lake District. Anyway, let's get you inside and show you around my shipping container because it is ultra cool and obviously getting this is just gonna make it even cooler. So let's get inside, eh? Come on. Firstly, we have this beautiful stone arch that I built, which is classed as a moon gate really, and I use this as an entrance to my shipping container. It was an interesting build, because to start with, it was just a big pile of rough stone on the floor, which half of it I dug out of the ground, and I turned that into something beautiful. So it was a nice moment when I sort of got it all finished. And obviously with this, you've got to set an arch former, prop it all, build over the top, and then from that point, let it set, and then hope that when you take the arch former out, that it all holds up. And look, it is still standing seven years later and still looks as beautiful as it did on the day that I built it. So yeah, very proud of that one. I've got a temporary toilet which I've set up here and this is uh, just a toilet cubicle and I built this out of an old postage crate which was like pretty much just a wire sort of container uh, with a door on the front. Let me just open it up. So simply I utilise the door and I've lined it all out. I fit a urine diverter seat in here which just goes off to a soak away and then the solids are bagged up and then that can be used and put on the compost heap. I've also got a fan on the back of this toilet so any air that's in here is getting sucked down through the toilet and out so you get no smells whatsoever. It's actually better than a normal toilet at home because in that the smells come back into the room. This is just a brilliant way of getting rid of that. I've got my Skyway Tough 2 BMX wheel, if you know, you know, 1980s, rocking it, eh? I've put a little bit of a window in here, like a Perspex panel, which just allows a little bit of light in, but ideally, I need, do need to actually get a light in, so I might be sort of fitting that fairly soon, and obviously that's gonna run um, off this solar kit, hopefully. I've just lined it all out with a simple sort of board, and it works fantastically, really. Can't really complain with that at all end of the day you're only in here for five minutes aren't you so it does the job cool though that isn't it moving on then i'll just pop this door shut and i haven't even finished all this yet pretty much i've built this out of free materials all this sort of cladding just came off a roof that i took down once and i don't have enough to finish the front so when i do that's when i'll get on with that the locking system is currently just a stick so i'll just lean that up against it um, but you can lock it from the inside. I just need to work a way out to be able to do the lever that's inside from the outside as well. Just another challenge for me. Anyway, turning around this way, I've built like a little sort of garden area for this. So a pathway, just some retaining stones for the gravel, and it just comes around to a fire pit. So it's absolutely, yeah, it's light in this fire pit and sitting on this beautiful stone bench that I built, which is rounded. That took a bit of work trying to sort of shape those top stones, but I'm happy with that as well. So you just sit under a load of buddleia, so it's just nice when you've got all the butterflies fluttering, fluttering around. And obviously we've got plenty of bushes which pretty much do need maintaining. I've not done anything for a while here. This lovely green view with a bit of purple and yellow in it is framed perfectly by this massive window that I put in. This took some lift in it. It's a double glazed unit and because it's so big, I think it's six mil glass either side and toughened. So to lift that in place, it took me and one of my stronger mates to be able to get that in place. But 
very happy with it and from the inside you'll see exactly what I mean. Anyway, let's get in, eh? As you can tell, a celebrant clad this yet. I will do one day, but my idea for it is to actually build some sort of like metal cage around it and uh, plant in the ground all the way around this a load of evergreen climbers which can just sort of like encapsulate the whole lot and just make it feel like you're living in a nest. So I thought that'd be a cool idea. Anyway, yeah, look at this. We've got a bone here, which is obviously some sort of spine. Any guesses? I just liked it because it looked like some weird elephant. Anyway, that is the sort of lower spine of a seal. Cool, eh? Anyway, let's have a look in here. So straight away, let's just show you that view. Look at that, eh? That is just perfect. This is one of my favourite places on earth to sit. I absolutely love it. And I designed this in such a way that it's a multi-purpose area. So currently we've got it set up with a table in the middle and a bench either side. So obviously it sits two very comfortably. You can easily sit four and at a squeeze you can sit six as long as you keep your elbows in when you're eating. But yeah, chill out, play cards, have a beer. Just one of those lovely places to sort of sit and chill. And if there's just two of you, which is really what I've designed it for, you can sprawl back and just sort of get yourself closer to this window. And it's just great when there's like a storm passing because you can literally feel like you're part of that storm because the rain's just falling right next to you. And obviously from there, you can flip round. I've put a bit of an upstand at this side. So that with a pillow just means that you can sit back and take in that view as well. The table itself is made from some 18 mm ply board, which I just shaped just to sort of suit the space. So I rounded these corners off just so we can sort of slot your legs in and out quite easily without snagging on a sharp corner. And then I've wrapped it in copper and the copper I've got from some old copper water tanks. So just, yeah, pull some pieces off the tanks, with, cut it off with a grinder, and then I've just placed them on, glued them down, and then pinned them with some nice tacks. And then obviously, it took some work to be fair, but I had to sort of pull it round and hammer it and pin it on the bottom side of this. But I am very happy with it. I have a copper table and I think it looks beautiful. All I did was, was just sort of hammer a few sort of sections, put some dints in it, polish a few bits here and there. And then once I was happy with it, I just put a varnish over the whole lot just to sort of seal it all. And then now at least it's wiped clean. But what you can do with this is, is flip it up. I've got a single leg here which falls down. The table can then slide off these two brackets and then onto two brackets which are on the wall behind you. I've got a tent peg here which just holds it in place. And if I'm just gonna be careful now with my finger, I'll demonstrate. <laughs> there we go, we're off. I'll just put this over here. Under the table here, we have got what I call the love seat. And it's not that you just sit in here for so love, you need two people, don't you? So opposite your partner, you can just sort of chill out with your glass of wine. You've got a little bit of a shelf here to pop your wine on and just take in this view together. And I think it works really well. And the good thing about it is we can sort of take this up and get it out of the way as well. So if I just take this pad off, chuck that that way, and then this bit, I made out of an old oak table. 
if you can see that. So it's actually quite nice straight away. And this just folds away and then I can get rid of that as well. And that just turns it into the full benches. So you can have benches like this. You can have the love seat set up. You can have the table there. I've got another section of this oak table which sits here and that just allows me to then transform this whole area into a double bed. So the two backrests come out, sit themselves up into the middle there and I'll just put a decent mattress topper on and then we've got a lovely comfortable bed. And what a space to sleep, just having this as your view in the morning. So from the seating and dining area, it's a long walk into the kitchen and here we are. So I've kept this really simple, I've just put two big solid shelves up there which can take up quite a lot of weight and with that it just allows me to just shove everything up there including eight litres of water so this is my water source really I might get another one of these put it next to it just so I've got I can double up the capacity but it's just great having this tap on fill my kettle do a little bit of washing up things like that underneath just uh, hanging some cups I've got a couple of electric sockets and the kettle here and then this is just a piece of Corian which sits on top of this really beautiful oak dresser. I bought the dresser from a charity shop, 35 pounds, and it's solid oak. So I thought it was a complete bargain. So that combined with a bit of chalk paint and some elbow grease, and I've got the perfect piece of furniture to fit in here, which just stores everything you'd ever need. So it's got all the cutlery, a load of food in it. It's got games, poker chips, everything you could think of. So yeah, perfect then, and that is the kitchen. Moving on then, we have got a fan up here, which is just allowing a bit of airflow, especially if you're sleeping in here, just keeps it a little bit cooler. We've got an ax hanging up on the wall, just because we've got a fire, you need to obviously chop a bit of kindling and all that. A few hooks for hanging a few jackets and what have you. And an air rifle, just because that's good fun. So sometimes I'll sit in here and fire out at a target that I've got outside. So that's just a, a bit of entertainment. But the best place in the whole shipping container, the bedroom. And just take a look at that. It is just lovely. Being wrapped by all this wood just makes it such a calm place to be. And the mattress is super comfortable and you can sit back here against these soft cushions and just taking that view with a cup of tea. And I often come in here and just sort of chill out, grab the guitar, strum a bit, sing a bit. I put some fairy lights in above me here, which just give a really nice sort of soft light at night. And then we've got these two lights either side, which are switchable here. And they also two way with the ones at the door, but they are something that I made myself. This one is out of a pewter cup, which I won in a fell race as a kid. And this one is out of a copper cup, which I stole from a mum and dad's cellar. We've got a double socket either side with the USB port, and that just allows you to sort of plug your phone in or whatever at night. I've put in these two pig feeding troughs, which are just ultra cool. I found these on eBay for about, I think a tenner for the pair. And all I've done is just taken out the sort of uh, automatic water feeder and then I've just used them as a little tiny shelf, just so you can pop in your little odds and ends like your necklace, your ring, maybe your phone or something like that, just to keep them safe at night. We've got the table up here just against that wall, which is totally out of the way and you don't even notice it's there. It's actually a kind of nice feature though, and it allows a little bit of the light that's coming from this side just to sort of bounce off it and just fill this area up a bit more. Opposite that, we're having the guitar, it just allows that bit of balance. I do sort of try to design these things in that way. But this area is crying out for something and I don't know what. I don't want to cover the wood up too much because I think that is lovely and gives a real nice warmth to it but it definitely needs something up there. So any suggestions, mention it in the comments and I might uh, end up putting it up there. Anyway, enough of this lounging about. I need to get on with some work. So we're gonna get all this power kit from EcoFlow into the shipping container, unbox it all, and then we're gonna try install it and upgrade this beautiful shipping container, just so it's a little bit more off-grid and a bit more energy efficient. So, Let's bash on and do some work. <laughs> 
that's the boxes in for the full power kit. So in this box here, we've got the sort of consumer unit or the distribution board, whatever you want to call it. And it's just the main sort of gubbins and the heart of it all. And it's clever, very, very clever. It's, it's a lot cleverer than I am, I've got to say. So I'm sure it's going to learn me something today. <laughs> Anyway, there's also a control panel in there which just allows you to control lots of different things with it, just to do with the amount of uh, energy coming from different sources and things like that. And those sources might be your alternator from your van if you're doing a van conversion, you've got a couple of ports for your solar panels, you've got your mains ports if you ever do like a drive up to a campsite and you need to plug yourself in, you can obviously top yourself up with that way as well, so very, very clever. We've also got a way of storing the energy that is the input in two batteries here. So we've got two two kilowatt hour batteries. So there's a fair amount of storage for that. In this box here, we have got some smaller boxes and there's plenty of these, which are just all the different cables that you're going to need for your setup. A lot of the cables though, I think are already sort of pre-done. They've either got plugs already on the ends of them or they actually give you a set of crimping tools. So you can just crimp on the connectors just so it's an easy connection after that. But you don't have to be an electrician to sort it all out. And that is the best thing about this whole system, definitely. And then we've got a couple of solar panels there. I've actually got four solar panels all together. And these are the flexible ones. You can get the rigid ones if you want to fit them on top of your van or maybe on top of the shipping container flat. But I have got an idea for them. So I've just brought a couple over just to sort of uh, utilise first to make sure everything's working. But overall, when you get a setup like this, it can be a bit overwhelming because you've got all these different cables and everything going. But the good thing about this kit is, is that it's a plug and play. It's such a simple way of doing it. So I'm hoping that I can do this fairly easily without much messing about at all. And it just saves you. If you look at some of the van conversions that people do, they have got hundreds and hundreds of wires all interwinding with each other all over the place. And this just keeps it nice and simple. You've just got one at one end, a nice wire, then plug it in at the other end. And hopefully it should just be that easy. So we'll soon find out if that is the case. It's time to dig in here and find the consumer unit which lives under here. Get rid of all this. Currently my mains electric comes into an outbuilding out there which I've then run a 16mm armoured cable to this point. I've got a little consumer unit in here which just has a ring main on it and uh, just a lighting ring as well. So I need to get that out of here and then replace it with the one that EcoFlow sent. So let's see what we're dealing with then. This is the box with all the gear in. Nice bit of padding. And straight away, oh geez that has got some weight to it. Tell you what, let's shove it down here. Proper solid bit of kit is this. At this end, we have got the alternator input. We've got two solar inputs, and these three are absolutely identical. If I just flip off those rubber seals. So if you wanted, you could use all three for solar. Here we have the battery input one and two. And those are identical and then this one is the third one which can be used for the battery but also for a smart generator if you wanted this is the ac in and if you notice these are actually different so you can't make a mistake of which one goes where obviously the ac in is a different sort of a spec to what these are so that is why it is a different shape here we've got an ac out which is just your standard sort of plug socket for here in the uk wherever you buy this unit from obviously they will change that to suit what you need for your country on the side we've got the AC out and the DC out. So these two, again, they have a particular shape plug socket so you can't actually go wrong with the corresponding wires. There are a couple of ports here for linking the control panel. We've got a couple of buttons on top and this is just some LED lighting just to sort of show what is on and working. Main sort of on button there, which is quite nicely put away. And I've got to fit this unit into this hole so luckily you can actually mount it flat so i'm probably going to just sort of lay it flat down here take this off and then the actual control panel 
and everything can maybe sit in that position anyway let's get into this box and see what else we've got so on one side of this we have got just all the different cables lots and lots of cables <laughs> of all sort of different sizes and weights and these come with these plugs on each end which correspond with all the different ones for that unit there so it's pretty straightforward that oh and here we go a set of crimpers so this is pretty much the only tool that you're going to need barring a screwdriver and a couple of other bits on this side we have this is the consumer unit itself so if i just take this off one-handed <laughs> one-handed he says and it's still cut i can't do it one-handed so this is the main consumer unit which is all the fuses and everything in there which uh, looks pretty cool it's got this sort of like slightly opaque glass front i'll just take that off we've got a load of stickers here just for labeling all your different wires a bit of packaging and then if you look there that's just the main sort of fuse section these are uh, fuses as well you can obviously just take these out really easily they're just like these sort of car fuses that you get under each one of these fuses here we've got a little led which will just sort of show which circuit's working we'll just flip this panel off which will screw back on so i'm guessing there's a bag of screws that comes with it and in here look at that nice and neat is that isn't it so we have got six sections here which are correspond to these uh, first six fuses and they are all remote controllable so you'll be able to turn them on and off each sort of circuit with the panel so that's kind of clever because that's better than your normal sort of things that you get in your house but yeah straightforward you've got a few places just to tap out just to bring your wires in and each one of these rather than it being um, hard wiring with a screwdriver it's just a little clip system which uh, I don't know if you can see that these just unclip pop your wire in clip them back up so you're not sort of messing about um, being an electrician i'm impressed by that i think i'm pretty slick anyway the last few bits in the box we have some mounting brackets some more mounting brackets yep <laughs> we have got the control panel so this is what the data cable goes from the main unit to this and then you can control everything by this so all i'll do with this is mount it on the wall somewhere quite handy and then obviously you know you've got full control of the whole system then and then the last bag we've got a load of crimp sections here some extra fuses all little screws and bits and bats that you're going to need to uh, sort it all out so there we go time to bash on and get this done eh first job then was to turn the mains off so this is all safe and then i have removed the existing distribution board so this is redundant now and then the mains cable that comes in here which is the armored cable what i've done is inside this box here i've put a proper junction box and linked in the cable that they provided which is the ac in with this plug on the end so this uh, will plug into this system so that is the first bit done and now it's a case of trying to mount the distribution board that they've given me this one and uh, I need to sort of fit this in such a way that my existing wires can fit into this. So hopefully we can mount that and make that work. In this bag of tricks here, we've got lots of little bags of tricks. And each one of these is labeled. So if you can see that, we've got M4 bolts for the AC DC smart distribution panel. So these will correspond with something that fits in here. So these are actually for joining this AC uh, cable onto that. But they're ones for everything. So these are AC, DC, smart distribution panel, M3 bolts. So these, I think, are either for attaching the front panel and maybe just adding extra ones here. So all well organised and very easy to understand, really. Before I mount the panel, I'm just going to do my cable tap outs because it's a lot easier doing it here than it is once it's on the wall. So I'll just give these a whack. So there we go, that's one out. A 
done. But as you can see, it's pretty thick plastic this, so it's quite a solid unit. To mount the panel, we've got a couple of brackets here, and these are very easy to fit. You just uh, put them on the side here, grab a couple of screws, which are labelled in the little bags, and then just screw them in. These have also got a little spring washer on, so if you are fitting this into your van, then the vibration of the van is less likely to shake them loose. So that's one on, and that just allows you to screw now into the wall. I've mounted the distribution panel, that's just two screws either side into the wood, so nice and easy and solid. So now I need to fit a couple of cables to this. The first one being the Power Hub AC main out cable. Again, everything is labelled. And this is already pre-done, so these are very easy to connect inside that. And obviously on this end, we've got a plug. And this plug actually says on it, AC out. I don't know if you can see that. And it will only fit in one particular port. So obviously, it's like playing that game when you were a kid, trying to fit the uh, circle into the triangle space. And the only port it's going to go in is this one, which is also labelled AC out. So we'll click that in. And what you can notice there, if you put it in, it won't pull back out again because it's got like a little click system, which is clever because obviously if you are driving in a van and shaking around for days on end, you don't want any of these to sort of come out. So to get it out, you have to click the button on the top and then release it. So it works really well, does that. You can't go wrong. Click and in. I've just laid this power hub down in the bottom here and it just sits nice and solidly. It's got some rubber feet on it so it doesn't actually move anywhere. Obviously it's got some brackets to pin it back if you need. And I've done a bit of cable management, just pinning cables around just to sort of keep it nice and tidy in there. And then this cable here is for the solar panel. So this is the standard solar panel connector cable and I've drilled a hole in this back corner and I'm just gonna feed this through one at a time. And this cable itself is six meters long, so you can uh, at least get a bit of distance with it outside to where you're going to sort of situate your solar panels. And on this end, we've just got this simple little plug which plugs into this power hub. And it says on it PV in with the corresponding PV in on the actual power hub, so you can't go wrong. This is the battery box with a two kilowatt hour battery inside and I've got two of them. A total of four kilowatt hours, which is a massive amount for something like this cabin or if you're gonna use it in your van conversion or something like that. But if you wanted a home backup system, you can get different batteries which will total 15 kilowatt hours, which is massive amount. So when it goes dark, come the apocalypse, the party will be at your house. Anyway, let's get inside this. I'll open her up and we'll see what's inside. So we have a couple of brackets and the screws for the brackets and they're just pretty well made, just solid sort of metal and I think they're powder coated as well so at least they're going to be okay come rust and all that. Just open the packaging and inside Oh, see if I can do this with my bad finger. Ah. So here we go, a big fat battery. This thing is rock solid. It's really well made. On either side there's a handle so you can obviously pick it up and chuck it about quite easily. And they're made out of some sort of 
alloy and they're just beautifully made and if you can see there's these little indentations we've got one there and one there and two at the back as well and that is so you can put one on top of the other because they correspond with the feet that are on the bottom so yeah works really well does that and that just keeps it tidy if you just got like two or three stacks on top of each other on top of it i'm trying to do this with my bad finger you've got the uh, cable which uh, plugs in there and that just obviously goes to the power unit and it's got its own fuse and then if i show you here let's turn it on see if it's got some power in there and there we go we have 30 percent thank you for that giving me some power for free so yeah it already comes with a better charge so the other bits that go with this are the power cable itself which comes in a nice simple box Let's have a look at this okay dead easy already pre-done one for one side one for the other and i think those are identical so it doesn't matter which way around that cable goes the cable itself is sort of made flat and that actually fits inside this uh, section at the top there so you can actually wrap it and keep it really really neat oh what else is there oh these are the mounting straps as well so again it all comes labeled up um where's my knife gone i'll just open this up and have a look and see what the straps are like okay yeah so these straps what you do is if you can see this we've got these bits where some actual solid nylon straps will go through and then you can wrap it and tie it down to your vehicle so it's not going to bounce about so yeah works well with that but i don't need to really strap them down i'm just going to lay them in situ down there so anyway on to the next job i'm just having a minute contemplating the next job which is fitting the batteries so i might as well just show you so we just turn you around and look in this corner so ideally i'd fit everything in there just so it was all neat and tidy away but the two batteries won't fit and you do need to have a bit of airflow around these because they can get a bit warm i think and also another thing if it's too cold in here i think these batteries are self-warming so they'll keep themselves at a temperature that is more efficient which is clever anyway the two batteries i'm going to try fit under there right at the back and if i can get them neatly put away it still allows me to have a fair space at this front to either put a drawer in which gives me a bit more storage or i do have a full surround sound system in here i've got speakers if you look up here already set up ready to go so these just sort of need uh wiring in and i've also got a subwoofer and it's quite a beast this one here and that subwoofer potentially could go under there with it well i'm happy with that so far straight sailing no messing about at all i've got the batteries fit under here and as you can see the cables run out of the back there and they come here which uh, lead down to the plug ends and i've got all the other, other different plug ends ready to go in i've not actually put anything in yet because it is literally just a seconds job picking up a plug and putting it in the slot so i'll do that once all the power's ready to go the distribution board's all set up the only issue i do have is this existing wiring uh, now some of this might not be long enough to fit where i need it to fit so i'm gonna have to extend it which is a bit of a pain because i'm gonna have to go buy some straight connectors and crimp it all up but just one of those things but the rest of it yeah it's simple looks good and it's neat and tidy away so i'm gonna get myself home chill out for a bit and then i'll be back in the morning to carry on so we'll see you soon i'm back i've got my crimpers and some crimps and i only need a few of these just to extend a couple of these cables in this distribution board and then i can get the ac part of this working again which is the sockets and lights and things like that so let's bash on and get that done next i've got some two and a half mil cable here which i'm going to use to extend the two and a half mil ring main 
So we just need to get some of the inner cable out of this. So we'll just split that. And just strip this back. And there we go, got the cable to use as extenders. Well, I think I'm ready to crank this bad boy up. I've got all the wires in place that I need. So mainly I've got the ring main for the sockets in here and then there's a feed for the lighting switch as well, which feeds a few different lights in here. I've got some other cables which uh, in, at a later date may need to be put into this distribution board. Just a few more sort of different lights and things like that. But um, currently it is ready to go. Cables in place, green to green, brown to brown, blue to boom. <laughs> Let's see what happens then. I've literally dry fit everything. So everything's just sort of sat in place and like the batteries are sort of sat under me at the minute. There are things that I will need to permanently fit like the solar panels, but I've just not decided on exactly what I'm gonna do with those yet. I think I'm gonna build a frame and set them in a frame, which then can possibly go on the roof of this. And then I can maybe have it on some sort of swivel thing so I can sort of angle it towards the sun. Who knows? You might as well come up with the best design possible just to utilize that energy that is free coming from that massive sun thing which is up there somewhere behind all them clouds <laughs> i've also set up a couple of solar panels outside just temporarily just to bring the cable in here just to see if we can actually get something off it i don't think we will because it is too gray but anyway we will see so let's get all these plugs in and we'll see what happens The last thing I need to do in my tiny hole is fit the control panel. So this nice lightweight bit of kit and it just attaches to your wall on a little bracket somewhere. And this is a link to it with a data cable which is an RJ45 cable. So if we look at that, and as always, everything is labeled so it's pretty straightforward. It actually comes with two cables. So I'm gonna just link this up now and then we will see what happens. The only thing that I did see in the instructions, not that there really is instructions because you don't need them, but I did read one thing and it just said that there's two ports in the power hub for this type of connector. So one port is for this one, so we'll click that in. And the other port you have to put in, which I've already done, sorry, one of these, which is, I think it's like a blanker uh, sort of connector. See, again, it comes with two of these. I don't know why you need two, but we've got a spare anyway. So, let's just unravel this a little bit. And now, we'll plug this in and we'll see what happens. I'm guessing, because there's power to the power hub, that this should just come on automatically. Yep, there we go. So, let's see what happens with it. It's all new to me is this, it's exciting. Okay, so it comes up with a simple screen there. And I don't know what any of it means. I'll tell you what, I need to sit somewhere a bit comfier. Let's just move us up here. Oh, there we go. So, hang on, let's just sort you out. Come here, come here. Right, there we go. So we have this control panel and on it, 
let's have a look system let's click on this arrow so on this panel it is showing here that we've got 27 percent of battery power there and it's giving 10 hours at the current output which is 74 watts if you can see that so obviously if i change and add another light to that so let's turn another one on So that's the outside light and that has shot up now to 93 watt output and obviously that has brought this time down so the battery capacity at 27 percent is saying that we can run that for eight hours 34 minutes so if you see here we've got zero watts on the input so we'll click on the input there now that is because we have the solar panel set up but there's pretty much no sun out there so we are not getting much it is registering that there's something there but it's not actually saying that it's charging anything we have a solar panel 2 and the alternator there as well, but we're not actually using those. So obviously I could add more to the system if I needed. Uh, with this, this is the AC input. So if I click this on, because we have that power connected, I just heard it click on down there. And if you can see this line, so that is gaining power now, which means that it's charging the batteries. So the AC input there has uh, gone from zero up to 700, it's climbing, 700, 800 watts, 900. So that'll uh, end up getting to a point where it's going to stabilise and it will uh, obviously have the maximum amount of input possible from the mains power. So currently we are charging the batteries pretty much off the mains power. But obviously the solar is trying so come the uh sunny days i can't wait to test this and just see what free energy i can get i'm well excited about that so there we go it's uh, gone to 1.3 kilowatt input and it's still climbing so i'm guessing that with that it's got like a, a steady flow to sort of not overpower it and burn anything out quickly so that's why it's just climbing slowly something along those lines i don't know anyway it is working and it looks so straightforward i mean i've never used this before and it seems pretty straightforward with it so if i just click back now and go to the main screen so the charging time there is saying one hour 47 at the current input which isn't long at all really so that's pretty good. So obviously this percentage on the battery capacity will start to rise and get up to that 100% mark. If you just look there, it's stabilised at the input of about 1.9 kilowatts. And if you can hear as well, there's a fan that's kicked in on the actual main unit. And that is just obviously make sure that it's keeping itself at a, a temperature that it can work most efficiently at. You do have to make sure you've got enough ventilation for this system because obviously things get warm when it's electrical so you just have to be a bit careful with that in my uh, little cubby hole in this corner I've got a couple of little tiny holes well so tiny inch sort of holes out to the outside which just allow a bit of airflow and that's fine but I definitely feel I'm going to put a proper little vent in there just to allow airflow around it I think the batteries in a similar way do need to have a bit of airflow as well um, they actually have an internal a heating system because batteries when they're really cold won't work so the batteries themselves will if they get too cold use some of their power to actually heat the cells up so they can work better so very clever I've got to say anyway if we just click back on this so go back on the input so the charging time now is saying 1 hour 31 and within a few minutes we've actually shot up to 35% on the batteries there I've also got uh, let's have a look click back and go to the output so with the output if you can see on this bit we've got the AC at 92 watts and the DC output is zero and it's zero because I've got nothing on the system for that the good thing about this is you've got six different sort of slots to wire in uh, some DC outputs and with those slots they're all controllable I think possibly by this but you can download the app and use your phone to control them so if you're out and about and you want to sort of turn on a particular fan or an air conditioning unit or something that you're running off that then you can do that which is pretty cool so for me I'll probably use the DC once I get sort of set up to uh, 
run the fan that's going to my toilet so that'll be a definite one for that and um, possibly some sort of air conditioning unit in here uh, there's a plethora of things i just can't think off the top of my head but yeah it'd be good just to utilize that system for definite if you look on this input screen here we've got a little control bar here for the settings and that just allows you to change the AC input current and the alternator input current. So currently the AC input is set at 9 amps. So let's click on that. So we've got, let's see how we change it. Is it a, oh yeah, touch screen for that. Just drag that along. So if we bring that up to 13 amps and I'm going to click save. So it's gone to 13. So I'm guessing it should now draw a lot faster. So that kilowatt input should go up. There it goes. So again, that'll probably balance itself out a little bit higher. But that's uh, pretty good really, because obviously you can then just trickle feed um, energy into it. So if you've got like solar panels contributing at the same time as your AC then you're not going to be wasting the solar energy so you could just trickle feed a little bit of both in so if I just uh, change that again so I'm going to drop that right down then now let's go to 3 amps and press save check it's done it there we go and then you can see this power curve it's just dropped right off there the fan's gone off down on the actual unit itself and we are now have an input of 595 watts so you can tell how easy it is just to control this system first impressions of this are just awesome it's such a simple setup the whole thing i mean i have pretty good knowledge of all sort of building things and i'm pretty handy with everything i can do but I don't know anything about electronics and the fact that it is a true plug and play just means that somebody like myself can do it with ease. The whole system pretty much you could fit in a couple of hours as long as you've got all your cables ready for your AC outputs and DC outputs ready to go in. Two hours down the line you'd have this already going and it'd be charging and doing what it needs to do. The only things that would take a bit of time I'm guessing would be setting up like your solar panel system if they need sort of setting into racks or attaching to the roof of your van or things like that uh, what else that's about it i mean you know strapping a couple of batteries down it's literally just a few screws into a wall down to the ground whatever so yeah overall a plug and play that's what it is something that i am excited about is the potential to get one of those robot lawnmowers a mate of mine's got one and he swears by it it just saves him so much time, he doesn't have to mess about cutting his lawns at all, and he's got a massive lawn. So over here on my piece of land, I've got a lot of grass to cut, and I've got a ride-on lawnmower, which makes it a lot easier, but I still find it a chore, and I st still struggle to find the time to come over and cut it, so it never looks that good. The best thing about having a battery-operated robot lawnmower is that I can power it off this system that I've just put in. So once I get these solar panels set up properly, and they're powering these batteries, these batteries will always be able to charge up that robot, which means I am gonna have free energy and a perfect lawn. So overall, it's pretty much a no-brainer because also it's gonna save me a hell of a lot of time. Anyway, I need to get all this packed away, tidied up and make this cabin into something that I can sit and chill in again, because currently it's a mess. Well, as you can see, it's a reasonably bright day today. I've just come back just to test these solar panels and make sure it's working okay. So I've set up temporarily two of these solar panels. So that is 200 watts maximum input. So if we just nip inside and then we'll just have a look on the panel and just see exactly what sort of power we're getting. So if you can see here, we've got some input coming in, 680 watts from the mains. And from the solar, we have got 114 watts there. Free energy, that's what I like to see. So I can't wait to get all this sort of set up properly really and have uh, four panels all drawing in that and just trickle feeding when the, it's nice and bright just to keep those batteries afloat. And then for the power for this place, because I don't need that much, it should be free energy.
The limiting factor to this system is that the AC outputs and the six of them and they're all on 10 amp breakers. So that's fine if you're going to run a van because pretty much everything off there is going to be fine with a 10 amp breaker. Most of your household goods as well will be fine with that. But if you're going to use something like a hairdryer or something else that's got a high output, then uh, you might struggle. And that includes a kettle. So one way around it is you can just make sure that you've got like a low um, energy drawing kettle which you can pick up from most sort of camping stores and things like that. The usual sort of thing that you'd use for your van life thing anyway. But for a mains kettle like this, which is, I think this is 2000 watts, it might be just over that. I think it will trip the system. So if we just click this on and we'll have a look. So I can hear that it's actually uh, powered up there and the brake has gone off. So one possible way around this is to actually wire it in parallel. So that will mean my ring main, which runs around this and all the sockets, rather than it running into just one 10 amp breaker, I'm gonna run it into two 10 amp breakers and then hopefully it should work. Now, obviously you need to check with the actual manufacturer to make sure that this is okay. I'm just gonna see if it works and I'm pretty sure it will, will. But as I say, just make sure that it is safe to do so, that's all. Right, let's do it. Well, that is very simple to do. Turn the mains power off, turn all that system off just in case. And then all you're gonna do is on your ring main is take one of the wires out of the neutral and put it in the next slot along and one wire out of the live and put that in the next slot along. So then you've got two breakers working for one circuit. So hopefully it should work. Moment of truth, are you ready? So we'll click this on. There you go, it is working. I can now, now finally have a cup of tea in here. So yeah, good, eh? Anyway, don't hold me to that one. What you need to do is just check with the manufacturer and make sure that it is gonna work. I'm gonna test it myself and just make sure there's no problems with it. But I think there shouldn't be an issue at all. So you can sort of get around it by just wiring it in parallel. So yep, look at this dog out there, chilling. So there we go, my beautiful shipping container. It is just such a lovely space to come and escape to and encase myself with all this wood and I just feel like a bird in a nest in a tree. So a lovely, relaxing place to be. So yeah, I do have a few things to finish off in here. I've got some drawer fronts to put on. I've got three ceiling panels that I'm gonna put up. So on that far end, I think I might put like a mirror to bounce a bit of light on down there. The central one, maybe a piece of artwork. And then this one here is gonna be the projector screen. So I'm gonna have it where it folds down and then has a, a white backing on, which I can then project um, films onto. And on a rainy day, I'll be able to sort of sit in here, chill out and watch a nice film. So just adds to the whole experience, really. It has been a pleasure upgrading the system in here as well and adding this EcoFlow power kit so then I can utilize the sun's energy. So once you set up with something like this, obviously it just means that the bills are gonna be less and that is a fantastic way of being and you're just one step closer to being off grid or living out of your van or something along those lines, so yeah. So the next job for me is to make a racking system for the solar panels. I think I'll make it out of aluminium and I'll get somebody to weld it up for me, but my design needs to be movable. It needs to be able to angle towards the sun and also I want it to fold up so then I can pop it in my car and utilize it for charging up some of my other EcoFlow batteries as well. It's just a more efficient way to harness that sun's energy and to put that energy to where you need it. So that is the plan. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the tour of my little shipping container and the installation of the power kit by EcoFlow, which I've got to say is mint, as all their products are. So check out the link in the description to their website. And if you've got any questions at all, then just drop us a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
if I add anything else to the system or when I finally get this thing completed then there'll be definitely a couple more videos coming your way so keep looking in anyway from me and my beautiful guitar I'm gonna leave you with me singing like a bird